Hi, this is Randy Kirk. Today, I want to talk to you about something that maybe I should have realized a lot earlier, and maybe you guys already figured it out, but I just thought we could talk about the concept of batteries, lithium ion batteries used for storage, used for cars, used in any particular way, being a totally renewable resource for energy. <laughs> It's an odd concept, but we're going to talk about it as being renewable and as being uh, something that is sustainable um, and therefore fits just like solar and wind and other kinds of renewables. So if you think this kind of content is valuable to you, uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, you know, you know the drill. All right, let's jump right into it. So we are constantly being hit by the Fudsters and the misinformation folks and some of your friends and neighbors who don't like Tesla or don't like Elon or are worried about the future under an electric world. And one of their big concerns is all oh, the mining that we have to do in order to extract uh, lithium and nickel and other kinds of minerals that they're worried could be a problem for the earth, a problem for sustainability. A, a, you know, you know, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You've had those conversations. Okay. Well, along comes Elon Musk several years ago. We started talking about this a long time ago, and I've even talked about it. I've talked about it with my friends. I've talked about it in the book, the, the Elon Musk Mission, which you should buy if you haven't already bought it. What's wrong with you? Please go out and buy the book, The Elon Musk Mission. I even talked about it in the book, that when a car battery has met its useful life, which could be a million miles, it could be 600,000 miles, we're not going to know 100% for several years out how good these current batteries are that are in the cars. But whenever that time comes, when it hits 75% or 70% or something, um, and you have to get a new one or the car has served its useful purposes anyway, um, that battery can be taken out and it can be sold or given away. However it works, I don't know exactly because there's not enough business out there for this yet, but that battery can be transformed into an energy capture or a uh, energy storage battery. Because even though it's no longer useful for the car, it's plenty useful for energy storage. So now in energy storage, it might be able to be used for another 15, 20, 25 years. Maybe at that point, it goes to the next stage of its life. And the next stage of its life would be being recycled. So how much recycling can take place? Because a lot of folks, another one of the big FUD things and the misinformation things, the big myths, is that all of this material is just going to go into the ground someplace. It's going to go into landfills. All these batteries, what are we going to do with all these batteries? Well, as it turns out, batteries, and you may know this already, I may not be spreading any brand new news, but Batteries are basically about 99% recyclable. The lithium ion type batteries that we have in our cell phones, that we have in our watches, that we have in our, our, our tools at home, all of those batteries are about 99% recyclable. Now, that's not me talking. That's J.B. Strobel. Uh, let me go ahead and quote what he says here. But something that isn't intuitive is just what a high level of reusability the metals inside the battery have. All of those materials that we put into the battery and into the EV don't go anywhere. They're all still there. They don't get degraded. They don't get compromised. 99% of those metals are perhaps more can be reused once, no, again and again, literally hundreds, perhaps thousands of times. I did take a little bit uh, of, of liberty with his his paragraph there. So please forgive me for throwing a little emphasis. But his words were literally hundreds, perhaps thousands of times. So the metals are extracted from the battery after it's been completely used up in terms of its useful life in the field. Um, it gets crushed and mangled and mechanically uh, disrupted, you know, crushed. Then it gets chemically uh, uh, separated. It's some, in some cases, it is mechanically separated, like magnets and things of that nature. 
but all of those materials get separated and get reused. In fact, J.B. Strobel, who has a company that does that very thing, his company can't get enough of it. He needs more. He's looking for as much of this uh, material from old phones and from old tools and from everywhere else. He needs as much, many of these batteries as he can possibly find because his demand for the recycled materials that he is now creating in his factory is exponential. He can he can just about sell as much as he can possibly get. Now, the other interesting thing that happens with regard to this is that these metals, these materials that are in these batteries, when he recycles them, they're actually better than the first use materials that uh, people are getting from the mines and, the, and and that are refined. So he is barely has to do anything to them to prepare them uh, to go back out to the manufacturers to make batteries out of them. So not only do we not have a landfill problem, which you can tell your friends, <laughs> not only do we not have a problem of having a very long life for these products, maybe thousands of years, um, but we actually could call these uh, silicon type, or, I'm sorry, these lithium type batteries, we could actually refer to them as being a sustainable energy resource. Um, once out of the ground, yes, we have to mine it once. But Elon has talked about this for many, many years, that we will eventually only be mining the batteries for these raw materials. There will come a time when there'll be so many batteries in the process, in the system, that we will no longer have to mine the original uh, product in order to make this work. So I think that's a pretty cool thing. And I think it's something we need a headline for. We need a, a you know, batteries are a sustainable uh, product. They are a sustain sustainable energy product. Um, uh, something like that. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe you could throw me some comments down below as to what you think we ought to call it. Um, it's pretty incredible. It's pretty crazy. Um, this, though, does raise another issue. And I, I, I want to I'll bring it up here for those of you who have stayed with me up, up till now in the video. This is not just going to be true for batteries. It's going to be true for a lot of things. A lot of materials are going to be in this circular uh, culture, the circular manufacturing process, where things will be used, reused and reused over and over again, to where we won't have to do so much mining and processing in order to make new products. This is, of course, going to be one more thing that's disruptive to the way that we live. The way the 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 it'll be a revolution, if you will. It's evolving slowly, but ultimately, it will completely revolutionize the way that we humans use materials, and that means, okay, fewer mining jobs, fewer processing jobs, et cetera, et cetera. So once again, uh, that's part of what we'll be talking about in my uh, in my uh, Patreon uh, setup. We're, I'm going to be writing the, the next book, The Elon Musk Magic, and part of the magic is the results of the, all the magic that's going to happen. How will we live? What will the culture be like? How will people make a living? Uh, how will people deal with the fact that they have this much abundance? And if you think that that would be fun to be part of that process, part of the conversation as we prepare the book uh, for market, uh, please join Patreon. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and it's been great talking to you today.